Same thing. The Commissioner of Agriculture is in, Andy Gibson, Department of Agriculture and Commerce. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good to see you. No hat? Oh, there's the hat. Got it there's right here. Hat. I never leave home without it, Paul. <laughs> People I'm want telling to see you, it. man. Yeah. Well, good to see you. Geez, I, I think the first thing I want to talk to you about, and uh, we've chewed up some time here from uh, to, to do this, but let me jump right into it. And I was talking uh, to Mike McCormick yesterday, and it's not a pretty scene out there as far as agriculture and our farmers in the state, which is a mega uh, business and industry in our state. Uh, sometimes people forget that. But your overview of where we are as far as how the Russia and Ukraine situation, as long as well as the gas situation here because of Biden, is hurting our farmers. Well, you know, it wasn't a good situation even before the Russia mm -hmm. Ukraine uh, Russia invasion of Ukraine. But three things uh, people need to remember: these are the three key things: food, fertilizer, and fuel. Of course, you got to have all three of those things to survive in this world. And uh, fertilizer goes into producing our food, and so does fuel. Uh, what is happening in Ukraine right now is having a direct impact on the both the uh, supply of food, of corn and wheat. Ukraine uh, provides about 30 percent of the global wheat there uh, in, in that region and uh, about 20 percent of corn. And while this war is raging, the farmers are not able to harvest their wheat and uh, they're not planting their corn, which is coming up plant season mm -hmm. there in Ukraine. All of those things are adding to the already huge inflationary crisis that we're seeing in, in uh, this country. And our farmers are having to absorb those costs as part of planting the crops that are going in right now. So the fuel inflation that Biden, the Biden inflation has had on them, the fertilizer costs have almost doubled since a year. And now uh, the, the, the uh, actual uh, price of uh, just operating a farm is going up. On top of the fact that consumers are going to feel the added food prices, I think food prices are up about 20 percent due to the, uh, you know, supply demand issues and all these input costs. Uh, farmers are eating that and it's going into the cost of producing food. And I'm a, uh, I'm not a doomsday. I'm a, I'm a positive person by nature. But uh, we're looking at some major, major sh uh, supply shortages of food globally. The good news is in America, we will not have a shortage of food. We uh, will have plenty of food, but all of those all factors right. are going into raising prices here at home. Let me ask you this, Andy. What, what is it about, and, and, and uh, Mike brought this up yesterday, we can get everything else as far as fertilizer. The potassium yeah. is really important to it, and that is a direct source from Russia. Explain that. Why is it? Is why, why can't we find sources of potassium here? Potash, yeah. Uh, fer fertilizer, uh, that, you know, it's a huge component. It's part of the big three aspects mm -hmm. of fertilizer, and uh, they are such a huge producer of it. They're mining of it. I think there are sources of it elsewhere, but, uh, you know, there are mining limitations and mining regulations that we deal with. We can find it. Uh, for example, lime. We have lime mines here in Mississippi that we have used in the past. But there's so many EPA regulations in our country that make it hard to get after that. Uh, it, it's having a result, uh, you know, to, to fertilize an acre of ryegrass for our cattlemen this, yeah. this winter. The cost of that almost doubled this year alone just due to the, you know, it's, it goes back to a worker shortage. There are not enough people working to do the jobs for the plants to continue to operate. So you have a shorter demand, uh, a, short, a higher demand, shorter supply price increase, and this war in Ukraine is going to make it uh, significantly worse. Uh, now, we're, you know, the, uh, the good news is the fertilizer is available. The crop's going in the ground this year. Yeah. We just got to, we got to <clears throat> be very vigilant about this and understand that uh, this is exactly why we must remain a food uh, independent, uh, agriculture independent, fuel independent, energy independent as a country and uh, certainly uh, do everything we can to have all our fertilizer resources. We've got them. We just got to, I don't think anybody saw this war coming and I don't, I don't think enough was done to keep it from happening, but yeah. here we are. So yeah. we're going to 2014, yeah. uh, during the Obama-Biden administration, they were begging for more weaponry over there back in 2014 and yeah. uh, they didn't get it. Uh, I, I, it's like everything else, almost like China with the special minerals and, and earth minerals or whatever you they, they call them over there. 
that we just relied on them. You know, we're gonna right. we're gonna make this. Uh, you take the jobs, you do this, and we'll buy from you, and everything's gonna be copacetic. And it's cash. It's crashing in on us now. It, it was uh, economically. It was economically yeah. feasible then. It wasn't yeah. wise, and I think this is proving <clears throat> that point. I want to ask you this: Do we? Export anything to Russia as far as the farmers are concerned? Not very much. Not, but we used to export a lot of chicken, but uh, yeah. not much at yeah. all. They cut that off. Uh, yeah. More uh, coming up with the Ag Commissioner after this. So hang on. All right, but let me get back to uh, the the visit with uh, Andy. One of the other things that uh, I wanted to talk about: some of the past performances there uh, and events. Haven't had you on in a while, but everything go okay as far as the rodeo and all that. Yeah, we had a great rodeo. Well, let me back up. Starting January 20th, mm -hmm. we had the Dixie National Livestock Show, and uh, we had an all-time record uh, attendance and participation in that. Young people, 4-H, FFA kids, and the livestock show was growing. I think we had 47 states represented there in our open shows, bringing livestock to Mississippi to show. We are a, uh, really a hub now for that program. And then the rodeo set an all-time record in terms of attendance this year and uh, we are really excited about the future of the Dixie National Livestock Show and Rodeo. So uh, on top of that we set an all-time record for raising the funds for the uh, sale of champions, the sale of junior champions, the the cream of the crop, the young people, those who won uh, you know grand champion of the different species and also several a dozen scholarships were awarded so we're really excited about where we are at the fairgrounds, uh, director Michael Laster is doing a great job there, and uh, I only expect it to grow. We got the Mud Bug Festival coming up in in April. Uh, this will be our second annual one of those, and uh, we're uh, the things that the farmers market are kicking right along. We got a big yeah. kickoff March the 26th this Saturday to coincide with Agriculture Week this week, and <laughs> invite people to come out. We'll have some fire ant poison there. And, of course, support all our farmers. Buy local food. That's one thing we, uh, we keep coming back to. And our, our Genuine Mississippi program is all about local food, local farmers. Uh, the best investment we can make is in ourselves and supporting our local producers of the basic uh, sustenance of life. There is, um, just to top off on those, people around the Jackson area within the 35, 40, 50 miles, all the restaurants, Boy, in the last few years, you're talking about buying local and using local homegrown stuff. That has really kicked into high gears. It's a movement all over the country, and uh, yeah. uh, here is no different. And and the, and that uh, that market is certainly needed. So well, well yeah, congratulations. Well, it, we have several success stories through the Genuine Mississippi program. Go to genuinems.com. You can find mm -hmm. all our members there. But where restaurants who are members or associate members have tied into local farmers, they're buying their lettuce for salad there. They're buying tomatoes. Uh, you know, it's a, a coffee is a real life example of a business deal that happened because of that. So it's, you know, uh, you, you can never go wrong when you buy local and support your nope. local farmers. It, it's good to see that because of, and I think social media has kicked that up, that farm to table uh, movement yep. across the country. And it's, uh, it's in full gear here in the state of Mississippi. And we, uh, we thank you for, for pushing that with genuine Mississippi. Glad to do uh, it. The next event coming up is what? You well, said the Mud Bug. When, got, when is that? The Mud Bug Festival is, uh, I think, April the 27th through May the yeah. 1st. We've got uh, some great uh, acts lined up for that. I know Bobby Rush is on there and some other great acts. Get we're uh, we're yeah. going to eat a lot of crawfish and celebrate yeah. the Mississippi agriculture and have uh, basically a, a lot of rides. Uh, you know, carnival rides will be there, and people come out and enjoy that. Uh, one business deal I want to announce uh, that sure. we're, we're excited to host in June. Uh, we, we, we're firming down the dates right now, but, uh, you know, international trade, which is what I do a lot of, uh, has kind of been on hold around the world. It's hard to go into an area due to COVID, and there are a lot of, still are a lot of restrictions around the world. Mm -hmm. So about a year ago, I decided we were going to bring the world to Mississippi. And in June, we will be hosting the state's first inbound uh, timber buyer mission from nine different countries, literally all over the globe. They'll be coming to Mississippi. We'll be hosting that in the brand new Mississippi Trademark, which, yep. by the way, is trimmed with Mississippi <clears throat> Southern Yellow Pine. So that's in June. So all of our forestry industry out there, we want to sell as many great forest products as we can around the world. So uh, who's going to be, you're going to have all those uh, that equipment on display there? Yeah, we're going to have equipment. We're going to have uh, uh, folks who are landowners. We're going to make tours to properties around the state. And these timber buyers, they're companies yep. 
from nine different nations around the world. They're going to be touring Mississippi. They're not going to any other state. They're coming right here to Mississippi. we got more wood than you can shake a stick at. And uh, more pine trees as thick as the hair on a cat's back, I like to say. And there's plenty of it to be harvested. And it's healthy to harvest our forest and keep them Absolutely. healthy. So we're, and I, uh, yeah. We used to say that every, every tree cut down, they were planting two in its place. And I, I, yeah. in some places, that is true. Absolutely. We, uh, I, I think in the many years that you and I have been doing this, uh, certainly in this position, the only thing that hasn't come to fruition yet has been the reenactment or reinstitution of the flea market. <laughs> Because that was something we talked about many, many years ago, and I don't even know if it's possible anymore. Well, it, it is possible. Uh, we we uh, we've got it in the location. We mm. don't have the building. You know, the old flea mm. market that's there. It caught fire uh, and yep. burned, and it's beyond. They tell me beyond salvaging. Right now, we're storing rodeo dirt in it and other you know parts of the. Uh, yeah. equipment for the for the fairgrounds but they tell me it's not safe and it's been condemned for the public to use so uh we actually uh, i i'm in i'm a, just about ready to announce uh, the master plan for the state fairgrounds for the next 30 years mm -hmm. uh, we've been working with an architect on that uh, very pleased with that work and uh, we want to where's the acquisition of that land well we we've got the land we've got the property we just need the building we got it we've got a do away with that old condemned building and build that uh, building back. But uh, on top of that, you know, our livestock program is growing. Uh, we are in the process. Uh, we've already acquired two of the properties on the old Graymont, the hotels there. Yeah. Uh, the What's other, the plan for that is what I'm asking. Yeah, that, that plan uh, is part of the master plan. The immediate plan is for it to be demolished, cleaned up, and uh, used for parking. There, We are in discussions. We have been approached by different uh, hotel development companies about locating something there, conference center and uh, other developments. But all of that is, I'm working closely with DFA, Department of Finance Administration. Right, Obviously, right. legislative leadership uh, has an uh, important say in that. And we're going to do something beautiful and iconic that will catch people's attention and say, this is Mississippi yeah. right here at the fairgrounds. Would that take in the old uh, Dennery's restaurant area? Over yes. Too? Yes. We've already acquired Dennery's. Uh, it, uh, it, frankly, that's one of the buildings that I think could have been rehabbed, but uh, it probably would cost more now to do that than would to build a new building. I know it would. I people got, uh, who, and then again, this has been quite a few years ago, but people who remember going in with a family and shopping at that flea market was an unusual. Uh, been, you know, you could buy something you wanted to, but it was a great way to spend some family time. And yeah. I'll say this also is uh, a lot of folks are in and around the Jackson area, if you happen to be coming to Jackson, check the website, see what any of the equine events on there because yeah. you can there's no cost to go into the uh, the equine center and just right. sit down and watch it for a few minutes or an hour whatever you want that's to. right we just finished a and one and a half kids would enjoy it we just finished a one and a half million dollar renovation in the equine center finished some things that never were finished when it was first built a yeah. new hvac system uh, and part of this master plan is more crafts, more arts and crafts uh, to coincide with our farmer's markets. We always have more people wanting to bring crafts and arts and antiques to the farmer's market. We never have enough space. But if you go there Saturday for our big kickoff uh, mm -hmm. starting at 8 o'clock, then uh, you'll see you'll get to see some of the things that you want to buy, arts and crafts-wise, Mississippi-made, some really neat stuff. Uh, and we want to grow that as part of this master plan that we have uh, developed. How many pounds of uh, crawdads is going to be required for this event? Well, last year we cooked 12,000 pounds, <laughs> and I want to cook 24,000 this year. And I'm going to eat my fair share of them. And uh, I want to invite everybody to come out to the Mississippi Mud Bug Festival. That's April the 27th in about a month. After the legislature gets out of town, we want them to come too. And We've been, uh, you know... Uh, I, I don't have any particular legislation that uh, is yeah, critical yeah. to pass, but watching it and and uh, keeping up what's going on. But uh, we we've, we've hosted several events at the new Trade Mart, and frankly, the Trade Mart I should say this is the most rented building on the state fairgrounds right now. It's booked yeah. every weekend all the way through this year. Contrast that to two years ago when COVID hit. Uh, people are ready to get back out, do things. We're hosting the Absolutely. state's largest Absolutely. events and the biggest uh, groups of people we've seen ever at the Mississippi State Fairgrounds. Got a simple question for you, and we're about to run out of time here. Yep. But uh, uh, are your intentions uh, to absolutely run for ag commissioner again, or possibly explore other options, uh, retire, or another office? What What is on the mind 
of the Commissioner of Agriculture and Commerce, Andy Gibson. Well, I'm not going to retire. I'm I'm 46 years old and ready to go. I kind of I'm, I just went from time. politics. Yeah, yeah, but I no, I'm not going to retire. I, I, I my intention is to run for re-election for another term to this office. Uh, only the good Lord can change my mind about that. Uh, but that's my intention here today, run so, for another term. So we'll be seeing the hat for a while longer, or much longer, it depends. Well, it all depends. <laughs> and uh, we want right. to do what the, I want to do exactly what the Lord wants me to do, and uh, I want to die five minutes before I get out of his will. How about that? I like that schedule. I think that's a pretty darn good schedule. <laughs> Andy, it's always good talking to you, sir. Thank Appreciate you. God bless. Thank, thanks for coming in, sir. Thanks for supporting Mississippi Farmers. Thank you all.